Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back or welcome to the podcast. If I sound a little bit different because I'm getting over um, um, being sick um, the past couple days. Luckily, I'm over um, feeling like absolute garbage, um, but there's still some lingering uh, symptoms that I'm just still working through. I had a different plan for this month, uh, this month's episode, but life really kind of happened this month, but more so in the last uh, week and a half, because I've been working on it throughout the month, but um, it's not completely finished, and I didn't want to not supply anything this month, so I figured I would just come on and give you a little update about why life has been hard for me this month. The past week, if I'm being honest, has been the roughest, but the whole, the whole month kind of really kicked me. Um, cause at the beginning of the month, it started out as, um, a fit of depression all caused by, or spirit headed by, uh, a song from Hasbin Hotel. If you haven't heard of that show, it's a musical cartoon that's on Amazon Prime, and it's basically about the princess of hell, and she's trying to save sinners and get them into heaven. It's a great show. I highly recommend it. I know that sounds weird considering I just said that one of the songs um, gutted me. I think there's only like eight episodes for season one, and I, according to my husband, I think we're either hearing about season two or getting season two later on this year. I can't remember which one. So one of the songs in the episode really hit me in the feels, and so it started a depressive episode for me for um, about a week, and then I was just in uh, a bit of a funk And I was just really lacking motivation to do anything, let alone work on the podcast like I knew I needed to. And then we also ended up having to deal with um, our housing situation because we're currently living in an apartment and our lease is up at the end of this month. So we had to figure out if we were wanting to stay and if we were wanting to stay, how long we were going to stay. And if we were going to stay for a year, then our rent would be the same. But if we only wanted to stay six months, then they would raise our rent. And that just put me in a horrible mood. So then we had to figure out if we wanted to move. And if we wanted to move, um, would it be to a different apartment, which I originally didn't want um, to do because I hate living in an apartment. And but it's also still a horrible time to buy a house because that market is trash as uh, is the market for pretty much anything. So my husband ended up finding a different apartment um, that would give us more room and it's in a different state. And um, it was going to be about the same that we were going to be paying here for one bedroom. So at least we get another bedroom for the same price. Um, so I had to figure out, uh, we had to figure out, um, that, and after talking about it some more, I finally agreed that we can move, and so we had to go through that whole process of application fees, administration fees, deposits, and just apartments irritate me to the deepest parts of my soul, because I just think there's so many unnecessary costs of living in an apartment and I just I hate it I hate it so much I say that like I've done it for so long I've literally only done it twice but twice is enough for me actually once is enough for me to know that I hate something um so it wasn't what I wanted but it was still the better decision than what was gonna um leave us with because I hate living in the current apartment that we're at so I was like, okay, maybe it is the better idea to kind of leave it. So we were figuring all that out, getting the mood um, figured out, how we were, when we were going to move, when we were moving in, uh, who was going to help us and all that stuff. And then 
Uh, they weren't going to let us have one of the dogs that we have based on his breed. And I wasn't just going to get rid of my dog. So we had to figure out how we were going to keep the dogs. And we had to get them registered as emotional support animals, which they kind of are. So that whole fiasco ended up happening. And then on top of it, last week we were coming home from work and... Uh, my car, which was our main source of transportation, decided it was just not going to work anymore. And it uh, halfway home up this giant hill of ours that we have to go up every day, just decided to crap out and not run. So then we had to get a tow and then we had to figure out what we were going to do because my husband's car at, uh, was also not working at the time. So we had to figure out whose car we were fixing, uh, what was going to happen, and anything like that. So my husband, being the absolute champ that he is, uh, he spent two days working on his car, getting it up and running, and getting all the necessary paperwork in place so that way he can drive it around, and a whole bunch of headache stuff. And on top of that, I got sick. So I wasn't very helpful with getting the car running because I just felt like absolute garbage and I wanted to lay down and do absolutely nothing because uh, I had no energy to do anything. I tried to work on the podcast, but I just, I, I couldn't do it. I had brain fog and it just wasn't a good time. That's what I've been dealing with and why I wasn't able to get the original plan for this month's episode done. I still do want to uh, keep working working on that, so maybe it'll just end up being next month's episode. But the other day, I had seen a post on Instagram that I really liked, and so I figured I would just talk about that for um, this little bit that we're together just because it's, it's been on my mind ever since I saw it and it kind of makes a lot of sense with a lot of things that have been happening recently. And the post said, uh, be grateful for closed doors, bad vibes and stuff that falls apart. It's divine protection from people, places and things no longer in alignment with your soul. So when I originally saw that post, it made me think about a promotion that I was up for about six months ago that I didn't get. And with this promotion, a lot of people that were not really involved in the promotion, but like were um, like the team that I would have been in charge of, the person that I would have been running the department with, and, like, a bunch of other factors, I guess you can say. Um, with the promotion, a lot of people wanted me to get it. I thought I was one of the best uh, choices for it. Actually, I thought I was the best choice for it, let's be honest here. And um, I didn't end up getting it. It went to somebody else. And at the time and for a while after um, not getting it, yeah, I was bitter because... A lot of people are bitter when things don't go their way, especially when they think they're the best um, choice for it. But the longer and the more time I had between the decision and um, where I'm at now, I was kind of like, okay, like I'm kind of glad now that I didn't get that position just because of a lot of other things that ended up happening with the company and just things that I started doing personally that just made it, um, I guess, okay that I didn't get it or made me realize that not getting that position wasn't the end of the world because it allowed me to be able to leave the current position that I was in at the time when I applied for the position to a different uh, department within the company and it was less stressful. It was less things I had to worry about. It was very much, I was able, I'm able to come into work, put my head down, do the work they need to do, and then go home and get paid. That's basically, once I didn't get that position, I was like, this is what I want to do. And where, what department can I go into that will let me do this? 
So I got the position. It's a extremely less stressful position for me to worry about. And it allowed me the mental break that I needed from my previous department because the management was horrible. And I just, it wasn't fun anymore. So I just needed a, a change of scenery, change of pace, change of everything. So this current position that I'm in allows me uh, the mental break that I needed. It also allows me the time and energy to start working on this podcast because I've been thinking about this, starting this podcast for two, two and a half years. And with that position change, it kind of allowed me the time and space to start putting work into this and doing this and challenging myself in a way that I'd never been challenged before and allows for creativity that I don't um, really tap into a lot. So in that sense, it was, yes, one door closed, but another one opened and not in the same capacity as like financially or um, work-wise, but Definitely something that would make me a lot happier with what I wanted to spend my time and energy with. Um, so that was one of the things that that post uh, reminded me of. And I, as still being with that same company, um, I thought about it a little bit more. And I was like, I'm really glad I didn't get that um, position because I felt like I would have ended up being stuck at that company. <laughs> And I've come to the realization that I don't want to be stuck at that company and I'm very much over being there, but I still need an income. So it's a very much means to an end as of right now, but um, it pays the bills. It keeps um, a roof over our heads. It keeps food in our stomach. Um, our dogs are fed and uh, we're able to do things that we enjoy and stuff like that. So it's not a horrible position to be in, but it's definitely something that I don't see myself being with uh, for the rest of my life. Because I ended up talking to my husband a couple weeks ago, and I was just telling him, like, I'm just, I'm over being there. I don't want to be there anymore. And he was like, okay, well, do you want to start looking for another job? And I was like, I mean, maybe, but I also don't know what I want to do for another job. So I just know that this particular job doesn't serve me in the way that I want it to um, anymore. But I know it's just something that kind of needs to still be there as a way to just keep the money coming in. So um, with this move, I told him, I think it was last night, that I'm thinking about maybe looking for a different job uh, once we're in that other state that um, we're going to be moving to. Uh, That way it's just... um, less of a drive but granted the company is also moving to um, somewhere closer to where we're moving so it's not going to be that much of a drive uh, once uh, they move buildings so things are lining up um, in a different way but we'll see if I end up doing it who knows Um, and then another thing that that post kind of resonates with at least for me uh in in terms of like the move and the car um with the move I've always hated this apartment that we live in it's too small it's overpriced and just uh there's a lot of things wrong with it and I don't like the management of the complex and I just I, I just don't like it I hated it I've hated it almost since the moment I moved in into it But it also, it was the first place I ever lived in that wasn't uh, my dad's house. So it was the first place that I was ever really on my own and kind of off in the real world, kind of doing my own thing. So as much as I hate this place, it kind of, it has that significance for me. But with the move, we're going to be able to go to a bigger apartment for roughly the same amount of money and be in a different state in the state that we originally wanted to be in 
and just start doing different experiences. We'll be around different people and kind of just start that next chapter of our lives over there. And with the car, I love my car. So I just think it was very much a, I need a break because I, I do drive that car pretty hard. Um, and I have since the moment I got it. And I was talking to my dad a little bit ago and we're talking about the car. And I was telling him that the day that we're supposed to move would have been is the 10 year anniversary of when I first got my car. And I I joke that it couldn't it couldn't just stick it through for like two more weeks so we can we can get through this 10 year anniversary and have it run instead of crapping out on me. And he laughed, but uh, I was like, yeah, I think my car, that was my car's way of telling me that uh, it needed a break, which it does. So it'll get its um, very well-deserved break. And also something that was really funny or that I noticed um, was when my car broke down, we were on the side of the highway, so my husband said, call up your friend, see if um, she can come pick you up, uh, because he didn't want me sitting on the side of the highway, and he was like, I will wait for the tow, you need to go home, and I was like, okay. So my friend came, picked me up, took me home, and as we were driving home, um, I saw, I looked up and I saw this license plate that had, um, 777 on it. Granted, it had a bunch of other stuff on it, but the thing that I, that stood out to me was 777. And for those of you that don't know, um, when you see a number that's repeated three to four times in, um, a row, those are called angel numbers. And so that, um, is meant to believe that your spirits, your spirit guides, your angels are kind of sending you a message through those numbers. So depending on what number you see uh, is a different kind of message. Like I've heard um, like ones, like ones that are repeated three to four times or like a manifestation number. Um, So it's like a good thing for you to like manifest what you want when you see that number. Um, Fours and eights are like for protection. So like when you see fours and eights, um, that means your angels are protecting you in some spe- some aspects. So I saw sevens, and um, I ended up texting a couple of people that um, kind of w- what was happening. And I was like, yeah. And then on the way home, I saw 777. And one of my friends was like, oh, that's probably their way of telling you that everything's going to be okay. And um, which it kind of is because um, – in a sense, because we got my husband's car up and running again, and it's not perfect, and it has its own problems, but it's um, it can start, whereas my, my car doesn't start anymore. So there's that, and then we still have enough to um, – we still have enough funds to support the move and um, – we have a solid support system with everything that's been going on uh, the past week. So it may not have been the prettiest way of getting it all done, but it was definitely um, still something we were able to handle and kind of get through. Yeah, things suck in the moment sometimes, but as the saying goes, everything happens for a reason. And, you know, when one door closes, another one opens. So it's hard to keep a positive outlook sometimes. But especially when you're in the thick of it and just it seems like, you know, a number of things keep going wrong. But uh, we were able to get through it and we were able to have a solid uh, support system surrounding us through that difficult couple of days and uh, we're going to be able to get to the next chapter and the next step in um, our lives to kind of see what that state has to offer and what we can do over there. So, 
yeah so just i figured i'd leave you with that uh when things don't always go the way you want them to it should it could just mean that um they're no longer in alignment with you and to have faith that something better is around the corner or something or you're meant for something better and you didn't get that because yeah you'd be great at it but it wasn't something that was supposed to uh, work for you in the long run and the next time I talk to you I'll be in a different apartment not that any of you would even know without me telling you and I'll leave you with that so as always to all the negative voices in your head bitch bet and I will talk to you guys later what's up everybody welcome back or welcome to the podcast I had a completely different